Back in August, I was lucky enough to spend an entire week in one of my very favorite places, Saugatuck, Michigan. Saugatuck is located on the eastern shore of Lake Michigan, and it is known for its beautiful beaches, dunes, wildlife, and there are tons and tons of outdoor activities to choose from. Water sports, hiking, all kinds of things. But I was there for the shops and the food. Downtown Saugatuck is so charming, and it is just chock full of amazing little gift shops and antique stores. Saugatuck is also located to a lot of other great great places that are just a short drive away, including Douglas, which is like basically right next door, Holland, Fenville. We even took a few hours one day to go up to Grand Rapids. So I thought I would take you along with me to some of the shops that I visited. This is by no means an exhaustive list of places in the area, but these are just some highlights from my trip. First up, we had lunch at the Grilled Cheese Shack. That was so many times. <laughs> Eating tomato soup and it's 80 degrees. It's not 80 degrees. It's 80, it's 80 degrees. degrees. I'm sorry, it is 80 degrees. <laughs> How is it? Mm -hmm. Then we did a little bit of browsing at the book nook. Then we spent quite a bit of time at Country Store Antiques. Since you remember they had a sale on books the last time I was here? I think it might be a permanent sale, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Three hundred sixty-five more ways to cook a chicken, oh. telling me that there's already a three hundred sixty-five ways <laughs> to so cook many a chicken. Ways. <laughs> I'm just gonna set those down. This one, we don't have it. The sunset. A machine. Another day we had lunch at the Root Beer Barrel in Douglas. Ticket 24 to the second window, ticket 24. This next shop is probably my favorite one in all of Saugatuck, the Butler Pantry. The Butler Pantry has been open since 1977. They have a wide assortment of kitchen accessories, table linens, aprons, pots and pans, and gourmet foods. Every time we visit Saga Tuck for more than a couple of days, I usually end up going here twice because I love it so much. It's a peel that like you can sharpen. It's like a peeler.
You can buy one for a holder. That's cute. It is cute, isn't it? And it's like squeezable. The big group a little bigger. I keep seeing things that I bought here that I still have like this. <laughs> Chocolate chunk, sugar, sugar, and chocolate cherry. Okay. Sure you. It's pretty. I like to go with vegetables too. Actually, I really like that one. person their own individual butter pat and it's curved like corn. That's great. I got a campfire cold brew at Outside Coffee Company and they even toasted a marshmallow to go with it. I love an independent bookstore so I had to take a look at Reader's World in Holland. This is a cool sign we saw on our way to Downtown Antiques in Holland.
It says it's complete. Look straight ahead of you up above. <laughs> I love this set. I have these two bowls. I don't have these two. I would love to just this one, I don't want to turn it in They display it really good too. Wow. Oh. I know this is probably a big problem. I'm afraid to walk in. Yeah. Blue is more than this butterfly. Wow. Yes. How much is it? This $240 for the set is just $215. Um, yeah, I definitely don't see these as much. Oh. Like refrigerators, a big, bigger refrigerator dish. Oh my goodness, so pretty. But they're really selling mostly sets. a little bit rustier than I wanted to. Mm -hmm. I did come away with a stack of books, of course, but then I have a couple of other items to show you at the very end. So the first one is our favorites for family and friends. And this one is, you can see it, a Quaker Oats cookbook. Very cute little booklet. I don't know that I have too many Quaker Oats cookbooks. Um, I can't remember where the date is located on this one, but I think it's, it's like the 70s, something like that. I can look it up later and kind of pop it in here if I 
figure it out. Very cute booklet. You know how much I love a product booklet. And then I found this spiral bound current cookbook, all occasions appetizers. You may remember, or maybe you still order from the current catalog. What I remember from growing up is that they had a lot of like stationary items, little note cards, stickers, maybe they did address labels, but then they also had like gift items, sort of like this cookbook. I have one or two others in my collection. This one is from 1982. And I really love this like avocado green color of it. Oh, <laughs> look what I flipped right too. Celery Victoria. <laughs> the photos in this book are like super 80s, very nostalgic for me. I was really excited about this one. I have most of the Jello pudding like cookbooks and the Jello cookbooks, but I didn't have this one. The Jello pudding idea book. It is so groovy. I was so excited. It has this like little, like in the beginning, this like fold out where the index is. I think that's such a cool little feature. This one was published in 1968. And it also includes, I was so excited to find this in the back. It's um, like an order form for other recipe collections from General Foods Kitchens. And I have some of these, it's so exciting. I actually made a recipe from this minute rice cookbook for a video. So, yep, I've got like the sweet moments dessert. I have probably five out of the eight of these that are shown. So if I just love finding things like that in cookbooks, just makes it extra special to me. Speaking of general foods, I also picked up General Foods Kitchen's frozen foods cookbook. And this is like a hardbound book. It's not very big. The opening pages are just adorable. All about frozen foods with this one. This is a second edition copy from 1962. The illustrations are incredible. <laughs> oh yeah, look at that. How cute. And there's more where that came from. I love these. I picked up Good Housekeeping's Supper Time Cookbook. I think I have maybe four, but this is part of a series. So I'm kind of slowly on my way to collecting the set of those, but I love these because they always have like the grooviest illustrations in them. This one was originally published, it says 1967, but this is the 1971 edition. The photos are great. You know, they are really fun to look at. I like how they're arranged on the page, but really where it's at for me are these little like drawings that they kind of intersperse throughout the book. They're so cute. And I really like the, the color of the cover of this one too. Now we're getting into a couple of better homes and gardens because of course we are. I picked up this So Good Meals. I am pretty sure that I have a different edition of this same book. The one that's from the 60s and then this one's from 1975. So we have the cover. We have a little bit of um, like some photographs on the back but not quite the same as they had like in the 1960s. But you know how much I love a better homes and gardens. I've <laughs> covered several of them on this channel. So that brings us to our second Better Homes and Gardens book. We've got gifts from your kitchen. This is very appropriate considering the winter holidays are coming up. This one was published in 1976. You have to look at the back of this. The way that they've decorated these jars, can you see? Yeah, there's like a little cowboy and a chef and I think that's so cute. And it's just full of things that you can give as gifts. Jams, marmalades, baked goods, just all kinds of things. So I have a couple of like larger books here. This one is a sunset cookbook. I don't have too many of those in my collection, but I have had comments from people People who, you know, they say they really, really love them. So I'm kind of picking some up here and there. This is the dinner party cookbook. And look how fun these colors are. This combination of this like salmon, orange, and yellow. The dust cover is in a little bit rough shape. I'm gonna keep it on there, but you can even see like the cover itself is in a lot better condition. This one is from 1962. These are, they kind of remind me of like block prints, like stamped block prints but there's like this vibe kind of all throughout the cookbook. I believe this was at the place that had books on sale for a dollar a piece. Like how could I leave that behind? And then I have Margot Oliver's weekend magazine menu cookbook, an easy to use cookbook with menus for each season and every occasion. Sorry about the glare there. There is a nice photograph of her right at the beginning of the book. And this one is from 1972 and it is Canadian, published by the Montreal standard. I just like this photo. I think it's very appealing. <laughs> that was my little book haul. So now I have a couple of more items to show you. This is a butterfly gold Cinderella bowl. And you might be thinking it doesn't really look like butterfly gold. It's like the same color. So this version of butterfly gold 
was released in 1979 and they produced it through 1981. So the original butterfly gold pattern, which I'll pop in a photo here, you've maybe seen me use these bowls before. The original butterfly gold design was produced from 1972 to 1981. And this was made to sort of like coordinate with it, not exactly match, but you'll notice it's kind of like more of a bouquet design with the flowers. I was so excited to find this. I thought it was a pretty reasonable price. I think I paid maybe around $20 for it, but for a big bowl like this, that is pretty good. That was at Downtown Antiques in Holland that I found this. They had a ton of Pyrex. I think I showed you just the stacks and stacks of Pyrex, but a lot of those were being sold as sets, which kind of put them you know, a little outside my price range. I do like to pick up individual pieces, kind of go for these like bigger bowls and stuff, but I was really happy with that purchase. Also, that place was so great. I mean, just in general, it was great, but the person there like wrapped this for me so well because I told them that we were driving it from Saugatuck to Cleveland. There's no way that anything was gonna get to this and break it. <laughs> so that was amazing. And so this is kind of like my final, final piece de resistance. It's very heavy. This is Betty Crocker's step-by-step -step recipes. If you follow me on Instagram, which you should be doing, you probably saw this because I was so excited when I got it, I posted a photo. It's a little bit hard to see the logo because it's kind of like raised here. It's not like painted on, so I'll just pop in a photo. But let me, <laughs> I should have done this a better way because it is so heavy, but you can just I'll lift it up so you can see. It is complete. I paid $24.99 for this. I was very happy to get it, mostly because these types of things, like when you purchase them online, they're so heavy that the shipping is very expensive. So I was thrilled at that price because it was complete. I went through it, I knew it was complete. It was in great condition and I didn't have to pay shipping for it. I was just gonna drive it home anyway. They kept this like little thing here that says, if you have any questions about your shipments or any part of the program, please write to your customer service representative. It still has the index with it, which that's amazing. So it's got a list of like every, every card in here. This is still in great shape too. And it's got this like really cute design on it. I already have the 1971 Betty Crocker recipe card library. Mine is green, but it came in like red and white. And I think like yellow, orange, that kind of thing. I've done a couple of videos using that recipe card library. This one was produced in like 1975, 1976. Some of the cards say 1975. The index booklet says 76. So it's, it's right around the mid seventies. But I think this was like maybe my best find because this one was like wasn't exactly on my radar. I wasn't super, super looking for it. But when I saw it there on the shelf, like I had to pounce. I had, I had to have this. <laughs> anyway, I hope you enjoyed my trip. We stayed in Saugatuck. I didn't give you a tour of our Airbnb, but I can link that in the description down below. A couple of pointers before I go though. We went in the summer, which is basically like the height of the season there. You do want to try to book in advance if you can. We were super lucky that the host for the Airbnb we were looking at like opened up a couple of extra weeks. But if this is something that you want to do during their main season, which is like Memorial Day to Labor Day, you want to start looking a few months in advance, if not right now. Saugatuck is also very beautiful in the fall. Lots of beautiful, colorful leaves to look at. There's apple picking in Fenville. So if you're just going to make like a day trip of it, you can probably go and be fine. But if you're planning on spending more time there, like a week, I would say try to book ahead if you can. If you love watching vintage and cookbook hauls, I have an entire playlist and I will link it in the description down below. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I post videos about food, vintage cookbooks, and retro recipes every week. Thanks again, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.